Hey ladies and gentlemen, Snivyg.apsil here, and today, I am not a happy Snivy. Something has gone seriously wrong, and it has gotten to the point where I felt obligated to do something about it. As some of you may know, and to those who don't know, new Resident Evil 3 Remake gameplay has surfaced for us folks to see. And unfortunately, my suspicions of this remake of Jill Valentine is starting to become truth. To clarify, after watching this new gameplay footage, I am not too fond of the new Jill at all. The reason why that is, is because there are quite a bit of dialogue and actions that happen that just throw me way off, and when you listen to it, it just doesn't feel like Jill. Glancing at the surface, this may not seem like such a big deal to all of you out there, but it is a big deal to me. Seeing one of my favorite characters from my most favorite franchise be so poorly portrayed is something that I am not wanting to see happen, ever. Heck, she might even be my favorite Resident Evil character of all time. Now, I'm going to show you said gameplay footage to help you understand my view on why this Jill just isn't Jill. But before we get into it, I wish to explain where my views were before the gameplay footage surfaced. Before the gameplay footage, and even before anything was released in regards of RE3's remake, I had hopes that Capcom wouldn't mess up one of Resident Evil's most iconic characters. After seeing what they did to certain female characters in RE2's remake, I was skeptical about how I felt they were going to probably approach RE3's remake. I had this sneaking suspicion that something wrong was going to happen but i kept my hopes that they wouldn't mess things up i mean there's no way capcom can mess up jill valentine there's absolutely no way you can mess this up but to my surprise and ultimate disappointment well i'll just get on with the video just to show you what i've seen and i'll break down my analysis so you can see what is wrong Starting off, we're going to be taking a look at the interactions between Carlos and Jill. All seems well in the beginning, but some interactions seem a little off. Some can be ignored or even overlooked, but it doesn't take long before certain dialogue happens that already derails everything out of proportion. First footage. We've been bringing survivors here. Here where? My guys have converted some subway cars into a shelter. It's safe. I'm fine. Personal space. Okay, I get it. This right off the bat is something that can be shrugged off, but this still rubbed me the wrong way. Seeing Jill just push away Carlos like that. This is something so small, so I just shrugged it off and kept going. But even so, this still rubbed me the wrong way. And my suspicions started becoming worse. Next clip. Hey, what do you know about that monster? Nothing. I've never seen anything like it, but it's no zombie. It knows what it wants and won't stop till it gets it. Don't you like that in a man? No thanks. He's all yours. This is another bit of dialogue that rubbed me the wrong way. The response from Jill was just... just felt... like it had a bland feel to it. But even still, I'm on the fence with this one. Because it's meant to be a small joke sequence. So we'll move on from this, but... I'll advise you to take that sequence with a grain of salt. Now on to the blatant bad stuff. Already? Snivy, but we just started. That's exactly what I'm saying. The following clip shows just how truly Jill's character was heavily tampered with, and how this just doesn't give off the famous Jill Valentine vibe. Roll the clip. Listen, I promise you're in good hands. I'm with the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service. BCS for short. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? You guys are the ones who caused all of this. Whoa, 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 whoa. What you just saw and heard is not Jill Valentine. The Jill Valentine we all know and love would never act out in such anger. And if she did succumb to anger, it would never go to such a degree of hostility. Compared to the previous renditions of Jill Valentine finding out that Carlos works for the UBCS, this leaves so much to be desired. In fact, it even lacks the same feel of the previous renditions. 
Here are the clips of the 1999 original RE3, as well as the Umbrella Chronicles version. Send it. Calm down, lady. I'm no zombie. My name's Carlos, Corporal of Umbrella's Biohazard Countermeasure Force. What's your name? Jill, did you just say you belong to Umbrella's army? Yeah, we came all the way out here to save you civilians, but the mission went bad the minute we landed. I need to ask you something. Why did Umbrella send your team here? Our mission is to rescue the civilians. How kind of you. Considering Umbrella caused all this in the first place, those liars! Look, we're just mercenaries, hired hands. Are you with Umbrella? Yeah. We came all the way out here to save you civilians. But the mission went bad the minute we landed. Save us? It's Umbrella's fault that all of this happened in the first place. Hey, hey, easy, Chica. I'm just a hired gun. These clips show the perfect level of emotion that Jill Valentine takes when it comes to the expression of anger. From this alone, this leaves me very upset. Something so simple as that short dialogue can say a lot about a character. Which, if you think about it, it's more than just simple dialogue. It's how the character expresses themselves. A character that we'll be playing as. As the player, we want to feel like our character as we play. We want to sit there and think, I am Jill Valentine. No, 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 no. We need to feel emotionally connected to our character. I do not want to play through a game and feel this disconnect from the character as I'm playing. If that happens, while you can stick all these new fancy graphics and gameplay mechanics and all sorts of these cool things during the game, but it won't feel as enjoyable. It won't be as enjoyable if the character I play is absolute shit. People need to realize this. People need to realize that all these new things won't matter if the protagonist of a game is not very captivating. For a character as iconic as Jill Valentine, Something needs to be done about this, because this is not okay. Let's move on to the big problem. If you weren't convinced yet that Jill Valentine's character has been ruined thus far, then I surely hope this will shed some more light on the issue so that you may truly see what I'm talking about. Play it. Carlos, I've reached the main avenue. Which way do I go? See a big transmission tower? That's the substation. You'll have to circle around through an alley to your right to get there. You mean the alley that's on fire? Maybe. Surely a tall drink of water like yourself can put out a few flames. <sighs> Fuck you. That right there, that right there, is what truly cements things even further that this new Jill isn't Jill. Jill is absolutely not the type of person to outright say fuck you to someone who's making a flirty joke to her. When I heard this happen in the footage, I had to pause and go, whoa, 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 that is not Jill at all. Jill Valentine would never do nor say such a thing. Heck, Jill hardly even curses. Jill Valentine is more of a caring, kind, and level-headed individual who would never say nor do such things to someone especially when the person is giving her a compliment no less if this were the real joe valentine she would politely acknowledge carlos's flirty jokey-esque style maybe even say something like Heh, thanks carlos i'll let you know when i'm through or alternatively Heh, i appreciate it carlos but is now really the time Something along the lines of that, and not just, fuck you. Something polite rather than hostile. See, and, and that one-liner that, that Carlos said was actually pretty cool. I, I actually enjoyed that. I, I, it actually made me feel happy. But my joy it was short-lived the moment I heard Jill's reply. And that's the problem. This new Jill is giving off so much hostility vibes when Jill isn't like that. The vibe I'm getting from this Jill is an angry, bitchy teen. And that doesn't help that the voice actress of this new 
Jill is subpar. Maybe even less than subpar. I gave the benefit of the doubt to this voice actress when I heard her during the first review reveal trailers. But now that I've seen some dialogue in action, I am far from impressed. Here's another example of how the real Joe Valentine would react to a person giving her a flirty compliment in Resident Evil 5. Show them. I go to helicopter with him and I'm going after Sheva. You got room for one more? <laughs> There's always room for a beautiful lady. <laughs> I bet you say that to all the girls. Just the pretty ones. Come on, let's go. That is how it's done. That is a great way to portray Jill. Heck, she could have even said that instead of fuck you, like fuck me. Fuck you! There was even a time where Jill was flirty in return. This is subtle, but here's an example from Resident Evil Revelations. Clip time. The antenna array is out. It's on the observation deck. Maybe we can fix it. I'm sure the view is nice. Me too. Let's move. See? These are traits of Jill Valentine. Not this new Jill. On to another bit of why this Jill isn't Jill. This new Jill irradiates no sense of power and strength to her. Like I said before, all I'm getting is bitchy angry teen. Here's an example to help better insinuate what I mean. Oh, come on. Not again. It's me he's after. Hey. I'll buy you some time. Hey, wait. Wait, Jill. This may seem a little nitpicky, but why would you go into the gate just to go back out? I understand if you're trying to score badass points with the whole I'll buy you some time thing, but just no. I'd understand if you were already behind the gate and it started closing because Carlos hit the button, but you hit the button, Jill. There's no sugarcoating this. No! Damn it! Come on, you creepy ass stalker! Ah! Creepy ass stalker? Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Surely there are countless other insults that are way better than what you just said. Yet you choose that? Jill, or Capcom, come on guys, this is ridiculous, that was just weak, it's not even clever, not even close to being clever nor cool, this brought nothing but sheer disappointment to me, it's pathetic, like why, Jill can say a way better insult to an enemy than that, and she has, I mean come on, creepy ass stalker? Is that supposed to be intimidating? That was just bad. Just, just, just show him how it's done. Resident Evil HD Remastered Jill. No, Barry! You viral cultured freak! That's the way to do it. I'm kind of glad Nemesis punched her in the back so she'd shut up. Because I, if she did continue, I feel she would have said something even more cringy. If I haven't expressed things enough, let me reiterate once more. This new remake of Jill so far is nothing like the iconic Jill Valentine. She's just some angry teen when mind you, Jill is an adult. Why do I see this as an issue? It's because for the player base, we need to have that feel of our beloved character. We're going to be playing as Joe Valentine throughout 90% of the game. So we as the player need to feel like we are connected to the character as we play. If we play through the game with this emotional disconnect, then we won't enjoy it as much as we should. This has truly upset me. And I'm pissed about it. Or, or rather, I'm very passionate about this. Because if you love a game, you want everything about it to be perfect. If you love a franchise and the games they make, you want everything about what they make to be perfect. You know, and you have to shit on a game that you like because you 
you want it to be perfect you want to have a good time you want to feel the true good of a game you need to feel it in fact you also need to feel the deep thought that was put into such a game to give you that great feeling that brings you enjoyment in a game and i strongly feel this new jill will not help make this game any better if you're playing as jill valentine she needs to be jill valentine take resident evil revelations for example you play as jill valentine throughout 90 percent of the game and i can tell you during my experience playing this game i felt captivated by jill and her performance throughout the entirety of the game the same can be said about other characters you play as throughout the game characters such as chris redfield parker luciani and even keith lumley these characters leave a feeling of captivation that really keeps you engaged in the story this is what we need from re3's remake jill valentine carlos is fine especially for the actor who plays him Jeff Shine, who also plays Javier Garcia in Tall Tale Games The Walking Dead Season 3, which just so happens to be my favorite The Walking Dead game of the Tall Tale franchise. And I'm actually starting to like Carlos more than this Jill. And that's the problem. Carlos is a minor character to the series as a whole. And it is a problem when the minor character is becoming better than the main character. Capcom, you can't keep doing this. You've done this three times in a row. No, no, no. You've actually done this four times already when it comes to characters now. First, Chris Redfield in RE7. Then RE2 remakes Claire Redfield and Ada Wong. And now you're going to do this to Jill? Come on, get a grip. Chris Redfield aside from those examples, it seems Capcom is slipping up when it comes to portraying strong female protagonists or just strong female characters in general. Like, where did all that talent go in, in the works of character performances? Ever since Resident Evil 7, my faith in Capcom has diminished. I won't go into details why in this video, but moving on. Resident Evil 2 Remake helped restore some of that lost faith, but it wasn't enough to where I can push aside any skepticism for future titles. And now, RE3 Remake is just around the corner. And I will be doing a playthrough of it, but I feel it won't be as enjoyable if this doesn't get changed. It's gotten to the point where I feel that Capcom should push back the release date to really make sure that things go right. And I'm serious. The longer a game developer takes to truly buff out the edges of a game, the better it will be. So I'm fine with a release date pushback. And this is what I strongly feel they should do. And let's get one thing clear. I love Capcom for bringing me such amazing Resident Evil titles. But nowadays it feels like they're losing themselves. And it pains me to see my favorite franchise start to go th down the path that I don't like. That I strongly feel isn't good for them. This is something that can be easily fixed. Capcom, you have one month until release. You can fix this. This is something that is easily fixed. Whether you do it or not is up to you. But please, do something. I hold faith that something will be done about this. And if you all out there wish to discuss more about this with me, then feel free to do so in the comments below. Thank you for listening, and I hope y'all don't hate me for my thoughts. But, you know, like I said, I'm very passionate about this. And when you're passionate about something, you would want to see to it that it's done right. Don't be blind to all the other stuff like good graphics and cool gameplay mechanics. Don't be blinded by your emotions of all the cool stuff. Really dig deep into things and take a moment to think, will this really be good? And there is the food for thought for all of you. Thank you all once more for listening and I look forward to hearing from others about this. Goodbye for now.